There are a lot of things we do behind the scenes that never make it on camera. One is measuring cylinder wall thickness. On that score, we are under the impression that as long as you don't bore 30 over, that your block is probably going to be just fine. Now, if you were going to go 60 over bore, you got to dial into this area to make sure that you have a worthy block and that uh, at 60 over bore, the cylinder wall casting is thick. This one is just fine. Um, but we're going to, you know, we'll pressure test it and magniflex it. And we'll know if there's any problem. I don't really don't expect one. Next is the issue of threaded plugs on the deck to stiffen it up. And um, this is where preference comes into play. Um, now, if you're going to be running in the Coca-Cola 600, by all means, or if you've got a dealing with a, a radical 400 small block, it's a great idea. You have to use cast iron pipe plugs and then drill them, you know, so the water can get through there, about 3 eighths. Uh, if you're running a straight and strip 355 like we are, then not so much. It's a matter of calculating the benefit and reward for your particular application that gets the nod here. When you chase and clean all the threaded holes in your block, now we also want to remind you not to forget the thread, threaded hole for the oil pump stud. And we use the Milidon part number MIL-17050. It's a chromoly stud and it's a kit. You get everything you need and it gets the job done. Torque it to 50 pounds and or follow the directions that come in the in the kit. There's a piece of paper in there with directions on it. It tells you exactly what to do. We check the main caps for a snug fit and also make a formal request that the machine shop check them as well. If you're going to a line hole in the block, like we are because we're going to main studs, then we got to, you got to provide your uh, main cap bolts or studs to the shop doing the work. Next is installing a magnet in the lifter valley, or not. Some things we do, some things we don't do. The uh, stiffening of the block of the deck and the magnet, we're not going to be doing that. The uh, magnet, I must mention, is a rare earth magnet that they use. That can wipe out your bank account off your ATM card. It can wipe out your credit cards. Be careful when you're around that thing. Put your wallet somewhere else. Or if you got an RFD wallet, great. But uh, be careful with it because it can wipe out your bank account, which isn't too cool. Can't be any parts without that thing perfect. So if, if I'm at Daytona, I'm running 7,500 wide open pedal the metal all day. Well, my wear rate on parts is significantly higher than my uh, little street strip unit here that sits in the driveway or the pits most of the time. And I'm really looking, if I had a magnet in there, the things that I would be looking for would be aluminum and copper. And both of them are not ferromagnetic. So... I'm kind of putting, you know, relying on my filtration system, my old oil filter filtration system to do its job. And then I'm going to have to cut open the oil filters and inspect them. And I'm going to use a magnetic drain plug and hope that does the job. And another thing we're going to do is we're going to, uh, take an oil sample, a used oil sample, and take it to the lab 
and have it examined and have them tell us what metals are in it. There's a lot to check. If I was you, I'd keep a notebook handy to remind me of the important things to do, the important things to ask the machine shop, the important specs that are critical, notes on things I noticed. All kinds of information can go in that book. I'll give you a perfect example. This tool right here goes into the lifter bore. So you can measure the lift at the camshaft. I got it all set up. Put a line on the bottom of it. And uh, <clears throat> it didn't, the bottom of it didn't turn when I brought the cam up to full lift. So we decided not to use this particular cam in this project, even though it's brand new. But intend to use it in a future project comprising of our own stuff. But this is the note I made. Number one intake lobe on this cam ever fails. The extended lifter tool did not rotate when brought to full lift. Tool may have scratched the lobe. Are camshaft lobes that soft? That's really not the point. A small scratch will become a scuff. A scuff will become premature cam lobe excessive wear. That all ends in one place and that is failure. So wherever this cam goes, that note is attached to it for its lifetime. I don't know about you, but I know the average price of Shade Tree Mechanic, a group I hold in high esteem that I belong to, has in a project at least five grand. Not all at once, sure, but accumulatively. And he, like I, or she, like I, am not going to jeopardize that investment because of something I did not make myself stop, pause, and consider the consequences for. Call it what you will, but my objective is to use the engine street strip for a lot of miles, at least 50,000. Now, let's say six months go by and we build another motor and we use that cam, the cam in question, and before too long, it's not running very good. We trace it to a number one intake lifter lobe that is flat. You are going to remember that note if that happens. You look in the notebook and sure enough, you can definitively say this is why there's a note written down here that it could be a potential problem in the future. I am never going to use that piece of crap tool again. I only use things that work. And we'll show you at a later date what we went to that works every time so that uh, tool although I'm not going to throw it away I'm going to uh, keep it for what reason I don't know